Hello traders and welcome to NAF's Weekly Market Compass where we help you navigate the week ahead. Our Weekly Market Compass is brought to you by our head trader Troy who in between assisting traders and taking the next step in their careers provides weekly and daily guidance in our live trading room every single day. Before we get into this week's guidance we need to remind you that trading does carry significant risk and all information in this video is just provided for educational purposes only and is not an offer or recommendation to trade future stocks, options, or forex. From everyone here at NAFT, good hunting out there and happy trading. Here's Troy. Okay, so um, I'm going to do a little bit different here on Monday. Uh, I want to do not only the Monday outlook, but also sort of a outlook for the week. Um, well, not only because, as you can see here, uh, there's only four items on the entire Monday uh, list here. We do have new home sales at 10 a.m. Again, this is something I pay a lot of attention to. Uh, you guys have heard me harp on new home sales, construction, home construction, uh, building permits. All those are really important to me from a macro perspective because it sort of tells us uh, what's going to be happening in the next three to six months. Okay, that being said, we have the new home sales uh, number coming out at 10. Uh, we've got a couple of FOMC members speaking later in the day. I don't expect any kind of information or new information to come from those guys other than, you know, it's a status quo that the Fed is uh, you know, trying to do between meetings. Uh, jumping ahead, so really no news today other than the 10 a.m. news. And again, the 10 a.m. news, remember this is an orange event, uh, so that means that it's a medium impact expected uh, so I don't really see too much of an impact on the S&P or anything else. Um, it's just not a huge market mover, but it's a huge clue as to what's coming down the pike three to six months from now. Uh, so 10 o'clock will be, I'll, I'll pay attention, but if I'm in a position, I may move my stops slightly uh, just to avoid any kind of little bump that uh, the ES may get from the new home sales number. Uh, looking at Tuesday, Tuesday is a huge news day, as you can see here, a uh, huge over, over the, uh, worldwide, lots of Euro stuff. Uh, you've got, uh, the, the British working on their bank stress test results, lots of good stuff going on overnight Tuesday and into Tuesday day, uh, from an U S perspective, um, you have CB confidence. Uh, consumer confidence and um, the Fed Chair Powell. Um, and remember, this is Fed Chair designate that they're saying that the you know basically Powell's going to be taking over for Yellen uh, after the new year or whenever her term is is finished. I think is at the beginning of the year. Uh, there may be a transition period where she's leaving and he's coming in, uh, but when he will be basically. Um, is the basically the new Fed chair, um, just not yet, <laughs> soon to be uh, chair elect, I guess we could say. Um, we have other things that are going on in Canada, New Zealand. Um, again, these are minor issues in my, my mind. I'm not particularly looking for anything major on Tuesday, uh, other than the ones at 10 a.m. And it will be interesting to hear what Powell has to say. Um, because obviously there will be a shift in direction as he uh, starts in putting out his influence across the, the Fed. Uh, we'll be starting to see what that means. Uh, again, I don't expect to see a ton of difference. Again, um, probably the number one thing that the Fed is doing and does continuously is to uh, try to maintain markets. And so their, their job is to sort of make sure there's no ups, there's no downs, or just sort of this main maintenance of, of a good economic environment for the economy to thrive under. And they try to control that just ahead, as just under 10 minutes uh, time, we should see the smoothly the as US possible. So that's why, years. you know, it takes, you know, six months with them so telling you, hey, we're going to raise rates. Hey, we're going to raise rates. Hey, we're going to raise rates to finally raise rates because they really want it to be that transition to be. Um, well projected, so the market doesn't react in a crazy way. 
However, uh, going to the Wednesday, the big one on Wednesday is Yellen testifying in front of Congress, 10 a.m. on Wednesday. Any time a Fed chair is testifying in front of Congress, the potential for some nasty comments or misinterpretation of a comment is certainly there. So Wednesday, I'll be very, very kind of almost to the, to the point of being skittish uh, from 10 o'clock until she uh, finishes her testimony. I'll be very careful on Wednesday. Uh, crude oil inventory is a big one for the crude oil um, guys who trade that. 1030 on Wednesday always will spike one direction or the other. Uh, so ha always has a high impact. Um, that's real. I actually look at the beige book as well, but again, the beige book is going to tell us more about um, specific economic things that are going to be in the future, uh, how the economy is going doing and what that's going to impact in three to six months. So I do look at the beige book, uh, but it's not a major impact. It just helps you with your macro view on Thursday. Uh, we jump into the U.S. has a lot of stuff, but there most of them are low to medium impact, with the exception of employment claims, unemployment claims at 8:30, big number, always a big number. And if it misses one direction or the other, it can be a major impact. So Thursday morning at 8:30, we need to be very careful around that time. Uh, Friday, uh, very very few uh, of interest. Um, bunch of FOMC meeting guys. I am manufacturing prices again, minimal, low impact to medium impact with the one exception of IMS manufacturing PMI. This one's a big one because um, this is looking at the costs that manufacturers are in, in or have and uh, that impacts prices in the long run. It really impacts prices. So that's why it's a high impact. Uh, very, very important at 10 a.m. on Friday. But so we've got a couple of great things to look forward to through the week. Um, at least one event almost every single day. Uh, maybe some days you have a couple of events, but for the most part, there should be a good news week, excluding today. There's just nothing going on today. Anyhow, okay, so let's so we'll take a look at crude oil here first. Uh, crude oil um, it breached this 58 level we talked about this breach over here this double top from way back in february and it did breach that and made a nice little run up to 59 before retracing i really don't understand this so uh, maybe jay can jump in a little bit later and try to help me understand what's going on in oil here uh, again the unless this is additional um, political stuff from saudi arabia it just makes no sense because supply is fully available and ready to be deployed, but prices keep going up. We have had a little pullback overnight um, over the weekend. Um, this is a little mystifying that this could actually break out of this range. Very strange that it would do that other than to possibly take out some stops and then come back into this range. You'll see the uh, volume composite here. There's a nice uh, happy spot here. Uh, high volume node area around 57 and I expect it to come back and be in this 57 range um, because the supply and demand certainly does not match uh, the ability for, um, for for to explain what's going on with the, with oil here uh, gold popped up again this is more of the uh, I think this is a little more Korean uh, and Trump related stuff that happened over the weekend a um, little bit of pop here up to a double top might be a great place to take a shot at a potential short here, although it's very difficult to see on those two bars, large bars, uh, strong bars. But right at this little double top here around 1298, looking good for a short. Uh, that being said, this is slowly moving up here. More fears coming in. Um, I didn't see any major things over the weekend that would make me think that there was some sort of geopolitical uh, event going on other than there was additional rumblings on North Korea. Um, that's what it is. I don't know. Gold is, again, I use this as my fear and greed uh, model to sort of see how much fear is coming into the market. Uh, and this is a little disconcerting that this is starting to pop up. Um, this is going to be volatility that will 
fi filter into the other markets. So um, this is just concerning. I'm going to keep an eye on that. Uh, the notes little pop up, but in general, we're going sideways to nowhere, uh, or at least sideways to possibly down. A little pop up this morning. Again, this is because the Fed is already projecting that we're going to raise rates in December, and I don't expect any kind of anything but sideways movement uh, for the next foreseeable future, uh, probably until after the holidays, uh, before we see any real movement in the treasuries due to the fact that the Fed has pretty much said, here's what we're doing. This is when we're going to do it, and the market's adjusted to that. All right, guy. Oh, I want to cover one thing. The euro has some major, major move, uh, which is, as far as I can tell, is all dollar related. It is coming up to a major a VRL here at 119.80. I'll be looking at that for a possible short earlier today. Huge move um, over the last couple of days. Uh, anytime you have a huge move, it's really, really hard for me personally not to short the crap out of it. But um, if that in and of itself is not a good reason just because it's made a good move. Uh, but if it comes up and gives me an excuse, I'll be definitely looking to short here. Big move up. No basic retracement. It's due for retracement. Uh, that's my two cents worth on the euro.